Building a personal brand is an ongoing process. And in the past year, I have been working on increasing the effect of my personal brand so I can continue to attract my ideal clients. And in this episode, I'm gonna share with you how I've done that, how I've increased the effect of my personal brand through storytelling and more without having to show everything of my personal life online. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Fast Forward with Amy show, the show where we lift your life and business with simple strategies. I'm Fast Forward with Amy, your host and coach, and I'll bring you a new episode every Tuesday. This past year, we have been focused a lot on growing our business. I've already said it in previous episodes, we've been focused on getting organized, but in a little over a year, we've also created two new wildly profitable programs, namely our Business Freedom Elevator, as well as our Boss Up Mentorship, the Follow Up Scale Up program. And throughout doing that, um, we have launched and we have launched again, and we've tried growing on social media and we've created podcast episodes and it would have been stupid of us to continue doing the same thing and not getting good results without looking at what's happening. And throughout the past year, we have had a few moments where we saw downloads drop or sales not going like we thought they would be going. And we have had to always analyze what is going well and should, what should we be improving. And one of those things that we uh, identified or I identified in my brain a little bit and talking to my best friend <laughs> is that, and I've said that before, but what's working or what used to work isn't necessarily going to keep on working. And that's the whole gist of online marketing of anything in business, basically. You always have to keep reinventing yourself. So over the past couple of months, I have been reinventing myself a little bit. And at a certain point, someone told me, oh, you're like uh, the Dutch speaking or the Flemish speaking Gary Vee. And I was like, yes, I love hearing that. Um, Because I actually really want to be a thought leader. It's in my character. I am... I was born to speak in front of really big audiences. Due to COVID, that wasn't possible. But a few months ago, I had my first meetup with a lot of coaches in real life. I loved it. I've been looking towards forward to speaking on stage for such a long time. I want to be in front of an audience of a thousand people. I love coaching groups. And I really, really, really love building my personal brand online. Now, this might not be the episode for you if you're like, I am not interested whatsoever. But if you are someone who is interested in building a name for themselves, in having their company grow through their personal brand, this episode might be for you because I'm going to share just my opinions and thoughts I've had over the last couple of months and how I have improved my storytelling, improved um, my sales throughout my storytelling and stories and different types of content and... um Yeah, I just want to share that with you. I don't have like five tips or whatever. I just have a bunch of keywords on my page. You can see it on YouTube or IGTV. I also, um, there's also some makeup on my my notebook. And I'm just going to walk you through the different thoughts I've had over the last couple of months, just like I would be talking to my best friend on the phone because rest assured, we talk a lot about this. We are always looking at how can we improve, what's working, what isn't working, what do we see other people doing that we could be doing without copying, obviously. And we always want to keep growing. And growth is one of my key principles in life as a person. I love learning. I love growing. I love growing my people, my business. I love making a lot of money. Just I believe never stop growing. So that's what we're going to be doing today. This is episode 107. And if you're interested in reading all about this, because I'll be going from here to there and back again, you can read everything through fastforwardamy.com forward slash 107. Wow. Cannot believe this is already episode 107. And I've linked everything up in the description below as well. So for the longest time, and I've also been teaching this to my students is, I was really focused on value because if you want to become an authentic authority, basically become a marketing and sales machine, just always attracting new clients, you don't just have to be good at what you do and have expertise, authority, but you also have to do it in a really authentic way in order to attract people. Now, as throughout the last couple of years, so many people have jumped on the bandwagon of building personal brands, the level of content quality gets higher and higher. And you can't just assume that what you were doing two years ago keeps on working. If I would create the same podcast episodes as I did in the beginning, wouldn't be working. So last summer we decided, okay, our podcast episodes are fairly broad. Let's kind of niche down. Let's really look at every episode is going to be for one of our ideal clients and let's make episodes speaking exactly to them. And as I'm saying this, I'm thinking, shit, (laughs) Who am I talking to in this episode? So I'm going to do my ideal customer avatar check and I'm going to think, okay, 
I know who I am talking to. I am talking to you, who is actually really good at social media. You're probably millennial-ish. You are over your fear of getting on camera, getting on stories. You love doing that, but you always have this drive to improve. So I'm gonna hopefully just help you improve your storytelling a little bit in this episode so you can become a thought leader in your niche. And I'm thinking of a couple of my clients who are doing amazing jobs in their beauty salons, who are becoming real experts in their niche of skincare, for example. They do such a tremendous job at marketing and they are not afraid of expressing their opinions. And I'm talking to that type of person who is okay being someone with an opinion, not doing what everyone else is doing and wants to keep improving um, like that. So authenticity and authority. Authentic authority is um, part of our business freedom framework. Our business freedom framework assumes that you have passion, talent, skills, and from your passion, talent, and skills, you go and build up your authentic authority so you can attract clients and uh, leads and on the other hand we have your smart business model because just attracting people at the right at the wrong price is gonna make you burn out and having the right prices but not attracting your clients isn't gonna help your business either so that's what our businesses um our programs are built around is the business freedom framework and today i want to talk about that right side on the image if you would see the image of the the framework and we're going to be talking about that authenticity in that authority because I'm going back to what I was saying earlier. I thought I told you this was going to be a little bit of a messy episode. So earlier this year, during our second Business Freedom Elevator launch, we had this realization throughout our launch that the launch wasn't going as we thought it was going to go because of a few things. We had a shorter timeline than we thought. I had made the launch calendar one week shorter than the previous one, and I didn't fully realize it. So that was not my best um, call. Um, but I also realized that in that launch, we had continued speaking to people like we just left off at the end of the previous launch. So that meant by the end of the previous launch, we were in this phase in our launch where we're just talking to people, engaging them, convincing them like, yeah, it's fine to join, like giving them the permission to join. And in that new launch, we kind of forgot to hit the reset button and to start all the way back from value. We started noticing that there were far fewer sales than we had assumed based on our stats. Our stats helped us identify like, hey, Houston, you have a problem. So we went and looked at it and I went and looked at my personal brand and I had seen that over the last few months since October to January, I had been really working on my authenticity and I had been storytelling and personal shit and Christmas things and all of the things and people liked following along but I was lacking value. My podcasts were a little bit less valuable, a little bit less to the point, and people were just not convinced that business coaching could work for them. So once we identified that, we switched and we started adding more value so that people could already experience what uh, the value was for them before they joined our coaching program. We did that and we still, I think we got still like 200,000 in sales in that week just because of the course redirect. So okay, value became the focus. And the months after that, I was like, okay, value, 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 keep on sharing tips, keep on sharing sets, all of that. And maybe the authenticity part fell away a little bit again. Or more and more people started doing the same thing and I had to start reinventing myself. In comes storytelling, because obviously I wanna keep doing great launches. I also wanna start doing a lot more stuff passively. I don't wanna be fully dependent on uh, the launches, but I wanna keep hitting my mark with people. I wanna be I'm gonna say it, I wanna be better than other people at what I do. I love marketing, I love storytelling. I love it when my story views go up. I love learning new things so I can teach my clients. And that's what I wanna do with you. Because when I am coaching, I'm not just sharing tips. In fact, in my Business Freedom Elevator program, all of the tips are in the modules, but in the coaching calls, I am making sure people have perspective shifts. I am making sure people have aha moments. And there I am kind of like a thought leader and I help facilitate those shifts. So if we look at who I am as a coach and I want people to get into my coaching programs and we look at my online content and one is re a lot about mindset, a lot about perspective shifts, a lot about motivation and believing in yourself. And then we look at my content and it's only value and just like tips, there's a little bit of a misalignment. So always looking at, are you telling the full story really helped me? And I realized, okay, when I'm in a coaching call, I know exactly who I'm talking to and online, I should be doing that too. So what we started doing as a team is we 
took hours and hours and flip charts and brainstorms and simple mind mind maps to go super deep into our ideal client. Didn't mean that in a dirty way. Super deep into our ideal client. And we're like, okay, who are these ideal clients for these different programs, aka who are the ideal clients we want to be attracting through our social media as well? And we name them. We know how they want to give birth, what they drink, what their fears are, what their parents are like, do they have a supportive environment or not? Not just me, but my entire team and myself, we know exactly who these people are for both of our core programs. And then we started looking at, okay, which transformations do they want to know about? Like, what are the things that like, I don't see anymore because it's been too long for me, or I think is really obvious and which stories should we be telling? So telling, not telling, telling is not a word, I think. Telling could be a really good word. It's telling and selling together, two of my favorite things. Um, my mom always says that what you do as a kid um, is often an indication of what you grow up to do. So my oldest brother, uh, Timothy, he always built a lot of Lego. He grew up to be an engineer. Um, my brother, Matthew, was always drawing and stuff. He's now a photographer. My little brother, Lawrence, was always singing and could remember every song. He's now a DJ. I just talked a lot. <laughs> My mom once took me to the doctors and was like, she talks all the time. But now I speak multiple languages and I make money by making stuff up and talking about it. So, you know, not that bad, right? I remember, um, yeah, my brothers used to be really annoyed that I talked so much. And now people are worried when I don't talk. Honestly, I don't talk that much all the time, I think, because I talk so much in my work. But okay, back to Stelling. Um, <laughs> we really looked at which transformations do we need? What does each client want to achieve? And which content can we create that really helps them feel that transformation, have those perspective shifts, start believing in themselves, going all in on themselves. And we infuse those stories with the vibe. And the vibe is something I've always been relatively good at like I bought a house partly for Instagram because I knew the white marble hallway would be really good in stories I knew the kitchen would look really good and I know that my pool is apparently very inspirational to people people love seeing my indoor pool and that's kind of the vibe that we want to give people right I had never owned any real estate I did not have any money years ago now I bought by myself um, the entire million dollar house with the indoor pool and I'm building that gym. I used to really look up to people who did that and that inspired me. So, okay, infusing that vibe, showing a bit of that stuff, but sometimes I forget to show that stuff because for me, it's really obvious. But a few months ago, I was on a trip with a friend, Marie Walt, she'll be on the podcast uh, soon. And I had filmed a, um, a really pretty hotel room without a filter. <laughs> this is going to go deep. This is for the people who want to go really deep. Um, no pun intended. And I had just filmed the room and the room looked nice. And I could just like swipe, put the Paris filter on it on Instagram and it was okay. But she had filmed this with a really nice filter in Instagram itself. And it looked amazing. And I was like, oh shit, you filmed it with that filter. I didn't. I should have done that before the room got messy. This is real life conversations between people who are building thought leadership on Instagram is talking about how you filmed the room and which filter you put on it because it's important. And she said, yeah, Amy, you got to curate the vibe. And I will always remember that she said that because she's so right. And I know how important it is to curate the vibe. That's why it's so important when I go on trips, I use the storytelling, the different formats of traveling to inspire people because you're showing people what can be achieved. Um, Honestly, I don't know if any of this is making sense to you, but I want to take you with me in my brain of how I perceive all of this storytelling, creating stories, inspiring people, because it might help you and your brand. Because your branding is really, really important. Um, being very consistent. Um, like for me, I'll create a lot of stories looking like shit, <laughs> but I'll also create the stories where I can show you like, hey, this is my team. This is my studio setup. I do have my shit together. You do want to kind of... I don't necessarily want people to look up to me because I don't want to be a hero. I think everyone is a hero in their own story. But you do want people to get inspired and to get the feeling that they could have this too if they invest in my programs, right? That's my whole gist. So as she said that, curating the vibe, I was like, yes. It's so important to infuse that storytelling with curating that vibe and really being so consistent. So a few days ago, I made a really simple video of my pool in my home gym. 
<laughs> like, I'm always postponing making reels and stuff. And I just like made that video. Like I love my home gym because it inspires me every day that I was able to do this by myself and I can achieve anything I want. Thousands and thousands of plays. And I was like, this is one of the easiest, cheapest pieces of content I've made in a while, but it's what people want to see. So constantly going back to the ideal, ideal client. I used to be my ideal client. I used to give fitness coaching to people in their home gym next to their pool. And I used to wonder how the f are they able to pay for a personal trainer four days a week. Guess what? I now have a personal trainer four days a week and I almost don't even think about it. I'm gonna not lie, I don't think about it. I'm just like, I'm so grateful she comes here and she makes me sweat and she makes me box stuff. So you wanna, everything you're telling people and the stories you're bringing, you wanna infuse that with the vibe and the branding that you wanna be bringing. But what is it in essence that you wanna be doing? I think it's really difficult for people sometimes to think, how can I build a personal brand without showing people everything I do and me sitting on the toilet or my boyfriend doesn't want to be on camera? What do I do? How do I become personal and build that personal brand and that thought leader without showing them everything? I believe that storytelling there can be your answer. And I think that you should start by making it really simple and by looking at storytelling as having an opening, a middle and a closing. My friend Celine Charlotte, uh, who's really famous in the Netherlands, does an amazing job at this. She is almost not on her phone, especially when she's traveling or when she's with friends. She'll create some images. She won't do that with a filter. She'll just be like, hey, I'm here with my friend Amy, blah, blah. She'll just save all of it. And when she's done with a trip or when she's somewhere and she feels like storytelling, she creates an entire story from start to finish. So what I will do, for example, I leave for a trip, I'll make a video of me packing. And you gotta close the story by, for example, arriving or arriving back home. And then everything you do in the middle is obviously your middle, where you can really just choose who you share. You don't have to share your partner on social media if you don't want to. You don't need to do that in order for people to get to feel like they're getting to know you and your authenticity. So the biggest shift for me was now again, yes, adding value, but kind of stepping away from value and focusing more on thoughts, on mindset, on the thought leadership aspect. And I've been doing that by creating stories that have an opening, a middle and a closing. And in the middle, I tell my story. I give my takeaways if I want to infuse it with value. And I also insert my what attributes there. My what attributes are like attributes, but for a human, for me, that could be, I drink a lot of wine. I have a cat named Billy. My brothers are really loud. I have a few things that make me, me. They don't even have to do with my business, not at all. Um, but they do make me really human and relatable. So when I'm telling a story, I can take people through a transformation or a storyline that I have encountered or my clients have encountered, infuse it with relatable stuff, and people feel like they got a lot of value, they had perspective shifts and aha moments, and they feel like they're really committed to me as a person and as a potential coach, coach because they feel like they really know me. And I think it's kind of like, I feel like I know Kylie Jenner, but I don't know Kylie Jenner at all. And she doesn't even do the opening middle close. She doesn't have to do that. But I mean, they've shown so much on the Kardashians. I actually haven't watched all of those episodes, but her social media is like working out twice a day. I'm like, oh, you work out twice a day? Okay, interesting. <laughs> or like I'm baking. Okay, so do you bake everything yourself? Do you have a personal shift or not? Like I think about all of these different things. What is Kylie doing? <laughs> um, I always, I know a lot of people hate on the Kardashians. I don't actually follow all of the Kardashians because I don't agree with them promoting all of the weight loss stuff. Um, but I have tremendous respect for Kylie Jenner as a businesswoman. I just think she's done a phenomenal job and I think everyone should feel like that. So I said it. Uh, last time I was in podcast recordings for my... <laughs> for my other podcast, uh, Generation Alpha Woman, which is in Dutch. And we actually had Anastasia, who is a friend of us, as a guest. And normally Jessica and I are always talking about Kylie Jenner. But Anastasia came on and she started talking about Kylie. And we were like, yes, finally someone else did it. Um, <laughs> going back to what I was saying, I think um, the biggest level up lately has been not just showing random pieces of my life, but turning everything into a storyline. Not thinking, I need to share it now, but thinking, I would rather share less and share a story that people get value from, that they get a mindset shift from, that they actually feel something about instead of just reposting stuff and like random photos, random stories, but really always making sure that it's a closed loop because that's how you take people with you in your story and that's how they will 
want to continue following you, your story, and also buy from you. Because obviously that's the gist of this episode is how can you use storytelling for sales and really build up that authentic authority so you can get the sales or the long-term clients. Um, I personally don't like following people who do the same thing for years and years. So I want to keep growing and I hope people want to keep growing with me. And if you're currently at a point where you're like, okay, cool, 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 Amy, but I feel like I should be focusing on value more and I'm struggling with that, or I don't know what my attributes are or the different pieces of content I could be talking about, I recommend you go and check out my content brainstorm training. You can find that through fastforwardamy.com forward slash content brainstorm training. It's a video training where I will walk you through how I mind map up out different pieces of content ideas so you can really just create content on the fly and um, no not on the fly actually so you can prepare your content and it's really easy for you to batch value pieces of content and then you can kind of infuse your stories around that because it just works so much better when people care and it makes it so much easier um, to get them to buy from you and obviously whenever I say stuff like that talk about making money or sales I am assuming you are giving people something of value. You are adding to their life. You're making an impact. You're offering something that they will actually profit from. Um, Yeah, don't scam people, please, with my tips and tricks. (laughs) But I think people will always feel when it's honest or not. Um, So good luck with that. Um, I just wanted to give you these insights on curating the vibe, on storytelling, on making sure you have that open, middle, and close so people always feel like they can continue watching your TV show basically is what you're creating and on how that can help you become a thought leader. I'm going to keep working on that. I'm going to keep learning about branding and storytelling. And if you like this episode, leave a review on Apple Podcasts if you want, because then I know if this was interesting and if I should create um, more episodes about my personal learnings in building a brand as I go. Talk to you next week, Tuesday on the Fast Forward with Amy show. And if you like the episode, episode, obviously feel free to uh, tag me on Instagram because uh, I love seeing people watch or listen to the podcast. Have a happy day and uh, talk to you next week, Tuesday. Bye.